Hey, what's up everybody? How you doing today? Today we are going to check out the Shark Ion R75 Robot Vacuum. So this is one of their cheap end vacuums, random navigation. As most of you know, I do not like any of their high end robot vacuums. So I thought, you know what, let's try out one of their lower end ones. So I've been quite impressed by a lot of the random navigation robots I've been testing. And I just wanted to see if this guy can do as good as like the Eufy 25C or the iRobot 692. Uh, this one I've just paid $200 for it at Kohl's. It was on sale, I had some Kohl's cash to burn, so I thought why not go ahead and get a item for this channel. So I personally think that this is actually gonna do a really good job. I have high hopes for it. Um, being that it's random navigation, should just be simple technology that cleans well. If you've seen my videos on the Shark IQ and the Shark AI, that's their attempt at a high-end smart robot. And in the previous test that I did, they failed pretty bad. I do actually have a Shark IQ coming to retest. It's been about a year since I've tested it, and people keep raving that the software updates made it a good robot overall. So I did like the cleaning ability on it. It was the app and the software that made it suck. However, I am gonna retest that as well, and I hope I can reverse my many, many negatives on it and can recommend it to you guys. But first, we're gonna dig into this guy. This is just gonna be a super quick unboxing, and then I will put this through all my tests. I'll do the torture test, then I'll do the larger room test, and then maybe even the large floor plan test if this thing does good on the other tests. So. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see with this guy, any specific test, and uh, let's get going. Shark Ion. Owner's manual, of course. Everything comes with that. Power plug, as well as the docking station. Now this thing will go back and recharge itself automatically, but it won't go back out and finish cleaning because this thing has no way of knowing where it's been. That's why none of these random navigation robots ever go back out and finish cleaning because they just simply can't. So very basic, looks very similar to all the docks though. Nothing really to expect there. Check out the robot itself. And there's the bottom of it. This thing has a thick brush at the bottom. I haven't really seen this on any of the other robots or even the other shark higher end vacuums. I'll show you the front of this box in just a second. It says something about the brush system, tri brush cleaning system. And there's also a brush on the back here that almost, I would say no vacuums that I've seen have it, which will just stop it from, if, it is, if there's a lot of debris here, it'll stop it from going past the brush. It'll kind of hold it in place until this brush spins and cleans it up, which is actually kind of smart. I'm surprised I don't see that in many other vacuums. Of course, it comes with the side brushes. This is just like the Shark IQ and the Shark AI. Just a single brush, which personally, I don't think cleans as good. Let me put this box away and then I'll kind of explain and show you the full robot put together. All right, here we have it. Just gonna snap these on, very simple. No screws or anything required. Just literally push them in, good to go. And so the reason why I don't like the single brush, it's actually good on hard floors where there's a lot of debris on the main section. But as soon as, soon as it gets over to the baseboards and the corners, these things just don't spin enough to where it's able to flick all that debris in the middle. So if you have a decent amount of debris at all on the sides, this will just kind of go past it because this thing can only spin so fast. And with a single brush, 
it misses a ton of things, which I did show off in my other shark video. So I wish this had the triple brush, but I don't know why shark just wants to do their own thing with this. I don't think it's as effective. Brush, always easy to get off. Pop that back in there. So being as though this is a cheaper robot, it does not have one of the main features of the higher end ones. And that's to where it will be good at getting rid of hair. So if you have a pet or for some reason have long human hair everywhere, um, this thing will probably be very tangled, which is the case for a lot of these cheaper robots. So not really gonna dig in on that. But um, yeah, let's uh, check out this guy. I really hope this is the first shark robot vacuum I can say I can recommend being that it's cheap. And if it works at all like the Eufy or the iRobot, it's gonna be perfectly fine. So good looking robot, I like the design, nice and clean. Check how big the dirt bin is. So very good sized dirt bin. Nice large hole there to get all your debris. This is one of the complaints I had with that new Shark AI is this hole was nowhere near as big and it was probably maybe half an inch thick. So if you had anything the size of a jelly bean or bigger, it would either get stuck in here or it would not go through it at all. So I'm glad to see that they have a much larger bin in this. Filter is very easy to remove. And yeah, that's basically it. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on. I'll show you the, the lights and whatnot. And we'll just turn it on for the heck of it real quick here. If there's, if there's any juice. Yep. See how well that cliff sensor works. Works fine, just like on all robots. I'm going to turn on max power mode just to see the difference. It's a little bit louder. You can tell the suction's increased, but these don't have that great a suction power compared to the, the, the big ones nowadays, like Roborock's best is 2500 PA. This is probably around. I'll have to look it up and I'll try to update when I run this thing, but it's probably around 1500 maybe 1200 PA suction, so not very powerful even on max, but I think it's still gonna do a really good job cleaning. So do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you wanna see upcoming videos on this. Like I said, I will be doing my stress test. This will be the 14th robot through that test, and I'll tell you how it compared to the other ones. And then I'll open up the room larger and we'll see how it does with a medium sized room. And then I'll open up to my large floor plan and we'll see how well it can do if it can tackle it at all. Most of these cheaper random navigation robots fail pretty bad once you get to a large floor plan. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.